Isaiah 54. We're going to focus on verse 14 through 17. But before we read it, how many of you know that verse? The verse says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper, right? Hey Amen. Anybody know the rest of the verse? Say it again. Amen. And it should be condemned. See, see, we, we quote that verse, but we stop short. Do you know why the weapon won't form? Have you ever thought about why the weapon won't, the, the weapon will be formed, but have you ever thought why it will not prosper? You ever gave that any thought? Well, the text is going to show you why the weapons shall not prosper. Amen? So let's read Isaiah 54, 4, I'm sorry, verse 14. Well, I'm going to just read 13, but you just stay where you're at with 14. Because I said that this 13 is just awesome. And all thy children should be taught of the Lord, and great should be the peace of thy children. That's a blessing within itself. All thy children should be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. Now let's get to the text. And righteousness shall thou be established. Thou shall be far from oppression, for thou shall not fear and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for what? For thy sake. That's good news there. Behold, I have created the smith, the blow, the blow it, the coals, and the fire, and that bring forth an instrument for its work. And I have created the waster to destroy. Now let's read verse 17 together. Read it together. Read it loud. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt what? Condemn. This is what? The heritage of who? The servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me. And then he, then he threw in there, thus saith the Lord. Just to throw it, thus saith the Lord. That's good news. I'm going to read that again. No weapon formed against me, no weapon formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that rise up against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So my title is simple. No weapon form, bring it on, devil. No weapon form, bring it on, devil. Bring it on. This is one of the most quoted verses by the body of believers when they're going through Isaiah 14, 54, verse 17. But they stop short, Pastor. They stop short of the full verse. See, because every believer has the right and the ability to claim the verse, but every believer cannot truly walk in the verse, must let's claim it. This verse is, this verse from the prophet Isaiah out of the mouth of the Lord wasn't just given to the exiles of Israel. It was given to the servants of the Lord, both then and now. Amen. Amen. The problem is that most believers cannot state why the weapon won't form. Although they may be formed, they will not prosper. And if the weapon is formed, if the weapon that is formed prospering, can it be that you have given the enemy, the devil, ammunition for the weapon to prosper and cause havoc? Could it be that you have loaded the devil's gun? You have loaded the devil's gun. Amen? Let, let, let me give you some examples of that. Just say someone, a, a believer, say, I got fired from my job, but no weapon form going to prosper. But could it be you showed up late at the job every day? And when you got there, you didn't want to work, but no weapon form against me going to prosper. <laughs> Could it be a believer got a car, a car, and the car them broke down on them? Now they, they got to catch the bus now. But no weapon form against, against me going to prosper. But could it be why they had the car past Mickey? They didn't put oil in the car. They didn't check the brakes, you know, and, and they didn't give nobody, they, they didn't give another same a ride. But no weapon form against me going to prosper. You're giving the, you're giving the devil ammunition. 
Let's take this one here. Now, this is nobody in here, but, but what could it be a person that say, I don't have any friends. All my friends just, just avoid me. They just run away from me. But could it be that you're mean and you're bitter and you're negative and nobody wants to be around you, but no weapon formed against me going to prosper? That you're running the same way. They, when they're trying to help you, you're away because you're so negative. You're loading the devil's gun. You're giving the devil ammunition. We quote in the verse, but we don't understand the fundamental principles that undergirds the verse. Amen? Are you with me? So I'm going to give you three reasons. Three reasons. It's right there in the text. Why the weapon formed shall not prosper. First is that you are established in God's righteousness. That's why it's going to prosper. The second is that the enemy's weapons has no effect on the righteous. And the third is that the the heritage of the saints of the Lord is righteousness. That's your heritage. Amen. So before you get to verse 17, you got to deal with verse 14 because the promise is in verse 14. The promise is in verse 14. But we jump verse to no weapon form. We got to understand what the promise is. The promise is, verse 14, you got it up there? Verse 4, in righteousness shall thou be established. In righteousness shall thou be established. That point straight to Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you know that? That point straight to Jesus. I'm going to show you. Jesus is the only true righteous person, amen, that ever walked the earth. Job came close. God called him perfect and upright, but Job has flaws like anyone else. Jesus is our righteousness. This is why every believer has the right to claim the verse, but you have to walk in righteousness and live right. Matthew 6, 33 says, what? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and what? His righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. Any fight was righteous. We don't know much about any. We know he was the, the son of Cain. But it says that, 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 that any walked with God. And he was not. That God took him because he pleased God. He's probably righteous. Abraham was about to be a friend of God. It was imputed to him for Righteousness, amen? So I'm going to ask you some questions. You just write them down or you can think about them. You don't have to answer, but what makes you righteous? What makes you righteous? What is righteousness? Does being right all the time or having the right answers make one righteous? Does keeping the law of God make one righteous? Biblically, righteous means the quality of being morally right and justifiable. And I don't know no man on earth that really can be justified. It's through Christ that we're justified. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. The righteousness of God, it's in Christ that you're justified. It's in Christ that you're declared righteous because your sins have been cleansed by Jesus Christ. That's what makes you righteous. Amen? I like what Paul said. Paul, Paul said, oh, wretched man that I am. Oh, wretched man that I am. Who can deliver me from this death? Thank God that through Jesus Christ, amen, our Lord. And then Romans 8, 1 says, therefore, there is no condemnation, no condemnation for those that are in Jesus Christ, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No weapon form against me going to prosper. Bring it on, devil. But let me tell you about your righteousness. Isaiah says it this way. Isaiah 64 say, but we are all but well, we are all as unclean things. And our righteousness is as what? 50 rags. 50 rags. Romans 3.10 say, as it's written, there is one righteous, there is none righteous, no, not one. No, not one. And I had to think about this, Brother Dominic, that, that, that when Abraham there talking to God through the angel, when they were trying to get Lot out, he said, Lord, there be 50 people. Will you spare he said, we ain't going to find 50. He said, let me think about this. If there are 40, will you spare? He said, no, make, Lord, that may be too many. Let me break it down. If there are 10. And God said, just go on, go on, because you're not going to find one righteous in the whole bunch. And, and, and that, that's where we're at. Over 7 billion people in this world today. And not one righteous except through Jesus Christ. Except through Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Romans 3.22 says, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Thank you. Thank you for repeating it. There's no difference between Jew, Gentile, Greek. Amen. When God sees me, when God sees you, he sees you through the eyes and through the lens of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Bring it on, devil. Hmm. Romans, thank you, brother. I need that. Romans 10 says this, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness for everyone that what? Believes. Romans 5, 17, for through one man offense, through one man offense, death reigned by one. Much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift, the gift of righteousness. Righteousness is a gift, amen, to reign in the life of one by Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 1 30, but of him, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Mm, let me ask you this. No, I ain't gonna ask you. I'm just making a statement. Being rich doesn't make one righteous. Being rich doesn't make one righteous. Being in power doesn't make one righteous. Being educated doesn't make one righteous. But of him, Christ, that's who make us righteous. Amen. Paul said it this way. Paul, Paul said, all that I gain, I count as lost. I count as dung. I count as carbon to gain Christ. And he goes on, he says, and to be found to him, I have my own righteousness, which is of the law. But that which through the faith of Christ, the righteousness, which is of what? God, by faith. Amen. So for all those self-righteous folks, there's no self-righteous folks in here, is it? Any self-righteous folks? Come on, you want to admit it. For all those self-righteous folks, hmm, all those self-righteous folks thinking that you're all that, all those self-righteous folks thinking that you're above the law, the law of God and the law of the land, all those self-righteous folks, all those self-righteous folks that think that they, they can do no wrong, Hmm. Watch out. Watch out. I got news for you. Hot out the press. But as ancient as time. Know this and take heed. Only God can declare one righteous. Only Jesus can make one righteous. Amen. And your arms are too short to box with God. Bring it on, devil. Hallelujah. So, the weapon will form, but not possible because you are established in righteousness. Amen? Amen. You're established in righteousness in him, in Jesus Christ our Lord. I like how Paul says again in Galatians, he said, I'm crucified with Christ. Yes, yes. Nevertheless, you come on up here and preach this thing, man. <laughs> Nevertheless, I live, but not I, but Christ that lives in me. Yeah. And the life that I now live in the flesh, yeah. I live by faith. Of the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And here it go, here it go. He said, so I do not frustrate the grace. I don't frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by law, by the law, then Christ died in vain. I tell you, he didn't die in vain. Amen. Jesus' death is not in vain. Hallelujah. It's not in vain. If you are a believer, you are established in righteousness. By faith in Jesus Christ, through grace, and Jesus full of grace. Bring it on, devil. Bring it on, devil. I know too much about him. You can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him. You can't make me doubt God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, 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 you know, I'm, I'm a good guy. I don't go around picking no fight with the devil. I don't go around picking a fight with the devil, but, but if he want to tangle, bring it on. I know who I am. I'm covered in clothes and righteousness. That's why it's not going to prosper. Hallelujah. No, get this. No weapon form, conjure up, mix together, we'll prosper. Amen. So let's move to verse 14. Verse 14 says this here. Since I know I'm established in righteousness, 
I have no fear what the enemy can do to me. You got to understand, you got to get that. Since you know that you're established in righteousness, you have no fear what the enemy can do to you. Hallelujah. I'm not terror, I'm not in terror or terrified by the enemy's threats. That's what the scriptures just say, right? That's what it says. I'm not oppressed. Oppression, depression, compression cannot hinder me. It can't hinder me from accomplishing the task, God's work. Amen? Hallelujah. No way performed against you should prosper. So let's move to the second point. The enemy weapon has no effect on the righteous. You see it in verse 15. Bring up verse 15 up. The enemy weapon has no effect on the righteous. And here's why. Because you've been righteous, you've been established in the righteousness of Christ, two things are going to happen to you. One, people are going to gather against you. Just because you've been established in righteousness, they're going to gather against you. They, they don't know you. They've never seen you, but, but they just don't like you because the light is shining up on you. You're established in righteousness. People are going to gather against you. You wonder why people mess with you? I ain't done nothing to this person. Because you're established in righteousness. They're going to gather against you. Hmm. Jesus says, they persecuted me, so would they persecute you. They hated me, so they would hate you. So, so for all you that just got to be liked by everyone, everybody's not going to like you. Everybody's not going to like you. I understand that. Be, be good with that. I'm good with that. Everybody's not liking me. Can't please everybody. So the other thing, it says that they that gather, they should surely fall. Although they got, they're going to shoot and fall because you're established in righteousness. Amen? So I had to go to my verse, my verse, Psalm 27. When the wicked, even my foes, my enemy can't eat my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Oh, amen. He's going to lift it up. Amen. Otherwise, it may be formed, but it won't come near thy dwelling. No curse, no voodoo, no spell. It's going to come near you. Start your establishing righteousness. That's what takes you to Psalms 91. They that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall, shall, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I found the secret place. Know what the secret place is? The secret place is righteousness. The secret place is righteousness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 91, 7 saying, A thousand shall fall at the side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come near thee. Bring it on, devil, bring it on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me, get you, let me give you four reasons in that text why they shall will fall. They are not gathered against you by God. That's what it says, right? In other words, they don't have authorization. They do not have authorization, amen? Hallelujah. The other way, because you're covered in righteousness, that you have a defense and a defender. Anybody been to jail in here? <laughs> Anybody been to court? Let me ask you that way. Anybody been to court? And you couldn't afford a lawyer? You've been to court and you couldn't afford a lawyer? They said you have the right for an attorney, but if you can't afford an attorney, then what's going to happen? The court's going to appoint you one, right? They're going to point you what? And a public defender. You know what a public defender is going to do? A public defender is going to defend you from the public. But you got an advocate. You got an advocate that's familiar with you. You got an advocate that knows your case. Amen. You ain't going to need a public defender. You got a defender. Jesus Christ, righteousness. Amen. Public defender is going to defend you from the public. Let me just throw in that for every young black boy. That go to court and get a proper defender. You know what ends up? They got to make a plea deal, whether they're guilty or not. They got to make a plea deal. But you got to advocate Jesus Christ. Amen. Four reasons. And then I, I, I like it. Four reasons why it's going to fall. It says, for your sake. Oh, I like that. For your sake. Now, for me, that, that, that is an affirmation who you are in Christ. It says, for your sake. And to assure you that God is with you. 
And if God be for you, who can be against you? Amen. It's demonstrated that you're more than a conqueror. It says for your sake that you're more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. And verse 16, let's go for verse 16. I'm not going to deal with a lot. That's what verse 16 says that, that uh, behold, I created the smith and the blower and the coals and the, the fire and bring forth an instrument of his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. Basically what it, what it said to me is that, 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 that nothing and no one can accomplish anything without God's knowledge and approval. <laughs> nothing and no one can accomplish anything without God's knowledge and approval. Yeah. Amen. That's what it's saying to me. Hallelujah. Are you receiving this? In other words, devil, the devil and your enemies, they just can't sneak up on you. Oh, they just can't sneak up on you. The devil can't overwhelm you or surprise you. He has to ask for permission. He has to ask for permission to attack you. Amen. And if he asks for permission, and God gives him permission, that means God got something in there. Amen. No weapon for him, no weapon for him. Bring it on, devil. You're a winner. You're a winner. You're a winner. Hallelujah. We're coming on so close to our close here. The third reason why the weapon won't prosper. We're going to hang out here in verse 17. Because you are the heritage of the servants. Don't miss that part. You're heritage of the servants of the Lord. I want to deal with three words in that text, in that verse. Weapon, form, and deed. Weapon, form, and D. Let's deal with form first. Now, let's, let's read, let me read the verse. No weapon form, no weapon form against D shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise up against D in judgment shall be condemned. This is the heritage of the servants. Don't miss that part. That, that's the key part. Of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So I'm going to deal with weapon, form, and D, and then we're going to be gone. Let's deal with form first. Shall it be formed? Where did it be formed? No matter where it's formed or who formed it, when it was formed, it won't prosper. Form meaning to be telemade, to be planned, or to be detailed. In the Hebrew and Greek, it, it means to be molded, to be squeezed into shape. The devil wants to squeeze you into shape. Everybody put a chokehold on you. That's the devil. He wants to squeeze you. That's what it means, to squeeze you. Hallelujah. But, 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 but whether it's formed on the earth, whether it's formed in hell, whether it's formed in a person's mind, whether it's formed in a laboratory, whether it's formed in a witchcraft or demonic environment, whether it's formed out of space or in your mind, it will not prosper. It will not prosper. That's why Scripture says, Scripture says in Romans 12, be you not conformed to this world, but be you what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the perfect and acceptable will of God. Amen? So in other words, if it's coming against a true blood brought, Christ-centered, spirit-filled servant of the Lord, it's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. Amen? Why it's not going anywhere? Because when Jesus came out the grave, he said these words, all power, all power given unto me, both in heaven and in earth, and up under the earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Why is it not going to prosper? Ah. Have you ever mailed a letter and the letter came back, returned the sinner? Huh? You, ever, you, you do that? And you, you really do, took a look at that letter. And there, there's a stamp on there with that finger pointing back to you. It says return to sender. Now, the reason, three reasons why it's return to sender. First, insufficient postage is return to sender. Incorrect address or no zip code is return to sender. Or, is it, or, or simply say the receiver simply refused to accept it. The receiver simply refused to accept it. Well, Jesus, righteousness is our postmaster general. He's our postmaster general. He returned every demonic assignment, every weapon form against you. Return the sender. Return the sender. Return the sender. And, and, and he's stepping it. 
He stepped in undeliverable. He stepped in insufficient power. He stepped in wrong address. He stepped in defeated by the blood of Jesus. He stepped in receiving clothes and righteousness. He stepped in it. Return it, return it, return it. Receive it, refuse to accept it. You're not a victim. You're a victor. You're a victor. You're not a victim. No weapon form gets you going to prosper. You got to understand why it won't prosper. Hmm. Now let me deal with D. D, 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 D. Everybody say D. D, 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 D. Okay, y'all got that? Before I say that, I just want to see. Pastor, you might want to take notes. Everybody that, everybody that, that claimed this verse raised their hand. Everybody that claimed this verse raised their hand. Oh, y'all scared now. I got, I got, you don't know what's coming. You don't know what's coming. You see those hands, Pastor? You, you see who raised their hand. Amen. All right. Don't worry about it. If your hand doesn't go up, I'll get your hand up before it goes. But everybody that claimed this verse, I want to see your hand. Come on, come. You said you. Uh, everybody said it, right? Now, now, who claim it? Who claim it? Who really claim it? Okay, we're going to find out. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Now, Pat, you, 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 took, you, you saw your hand. Right? You should have took a picture. D refers to the servants of the Lord. D refers to the servants of the Lord. Amen. If you're not serving the Lord, you can't claim this verse. I'm okay. <laughs> Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Let me say it again. If you're not serving the Lord, you cannot claim this verse. Because you've got to understand that there's a difference in just being saved and being a servant. There's a difference in just being saved and being a servant. There's a big difference. Now, Jerry, we, we, we were talking about progressive sanctification. This is not progressive sanctification, but there's a progression in your life and your growth and your walk. First, you're a child of God. You're born as a child of God because God brings you reborn. Then once you come to age, you become saved. Amen? And then if you get saved, I mean, you, you're going to encounter Jesus because you're a child of God. Or you're going to turn towards the devil just like your father, Lucifer. Amen? So you're a child of God, you get saved, then you start serving. From servanthood, pastors, we become what? Prisoners. Prisoners. You move from a servant to a friend. I no longer call you a servant, but I call you what? Friend. Amen. You move from the friend to the royal priesthood. You won't see that to glory. Amen. Hallelujah. So that, that's a progression. Hallelujah. Y'all with me? I didn't lose you. All right, all right. So, 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 how you know you're a servant? First, first of all, okay. Well, a, 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 a prisoner, a prisoner, Pastor Dominic, you serve even in your pain. That's how you know you're serving. You serve even in your pain. You serve even in your frustration. You serve even in your confusion. You serve even in your life. That's a servant. That's a prisoner. Because some people serve them the minute you get hurt, the minute somebody offend you, I'm going to take my ball and go home. But a servant, he stays in the pain. A servant serves people that don't even like him. That's a servant. This is for the servants of the Lord. Hallelujah, servants of the Lord. Oh, y'all with me? So how do I know when I reach the level of a servant. But let me tell you this first. Coming to church doesn't make you a servant. Coming to church doesn't make you a servant. Giving tithes and often doesn't make you a servant. I'm going to even say this. Believing on Jesus Christ does not make you a servant. Amen? You got to put your hands to the plow. Amen? So what make you a servant of the Lord? This is to me, to, to me, to me. What makes you a servant of the Lord when you serve out of necessity? Mm, I know I blew you. I messed you up. Me, I serve out of necessity. And what, what I say is that, that I serve out of necessity that, that, Lord, if I don't serve you, 
I'm going to self-destruct. If I don't serve you, I'm going to serve the world. If I don't serve you, I'm going to serve myself. That I serve our necessity. That I need to serve. I need to have that connection. That will make you a servant. Hallelujah. Let's keep on going. Will it make you a servant? You know you're a servant or not? When you come to church out of duty, out of duty and loyalty for kingdom purpose. Amen. Don't miss church because of kingdom purpose. Amen. How you know you've reached a servant level? When you're willing to go anywhere where the Lord sent you. Isaiah, here I am, Lord. Who should we send who will go for us? Here I am, Lord. Send me. Amen. That's how you know you reach the level of servant. How you know you reach the level of servant? When you're willing to suffer as Christ suffered. Amen. How you know when you reach the servant level? When you deny yourself and pick up your cross and you follow him. Amen. How you know you're serving when, 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 when you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God? That he will exalt you. You don't exalt yourself. That God exalts you. Then you know you're serving. Amen. That God is exalting you. Amen. How you know you're serving? Hallelujah. When you walk under the authority and the anointing of Christ, and I'm, I'm going to get you, I'm going to mess you up now. God doesn't anoint you to sit. You don't need the anointing to sit. Just sit down. God anoints you to serve. God anoints you to put your hands to the plow, to do kingdom work. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's how you know you're serving. When you, when, when you have a mind made up, a made up mind, and that, 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 you, you, know, that you came to serve and not be served. That's the biggest problem with Christians today. They want to be served. All right? You got to live a ransom life like Jesus. Jesus, I live a ransom life. I didn't come to, to be served. I came to serve and live a life for a ransom. So never, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. This is for the servants of the Lord. It's the heritage of the servants of the Lord. You have a heritage. You got a joint heir with Christ. Amen? Let me give you a weapon so we're pretty much all done. There are three sets of weapons I look for in this world. Yeah, you got the bombs and the planes, all the wars that are going on. But really, there are three sets of weapons. There's the enemy's weapons of darkness. There's believers' weapons of light. Then there's God's arsenal, the wrath of God. Are y'all with me? Y'all remember when, y'all, y'all, y'all remember when uh, with Bush and Cheney was in office? They went in Iran looking for what? Weapons of mass destruction, nuclear sources, right? Nuclear power, nuclear bomb. Weapon of mass destruction. But the enemy weapons, are, all weapons are spiritual. The, the biggest spiritual weapon is of the enemy is spiritual, spiritual emptiness, spiritual bankruptcy. And, and right now, we have a whole generation that don't know Jesus. A whole generation that, that have nothing to do with God. That's mass destruction. That's mass destruction right there. They don't know Jesus. They don't know God. That's mass destruction. Amen? Let me give you enemy weapons. The Bible calls them fiery darts, schemes, and wiles of the devil, spiritual wickedness. And the devil can disguise them as truth sometimes. And, 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 and he will give you what I call harmless essentials. Harmless essentials are things that you think you need. Things you think you need. I know it's not happening here. But, 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 brothers, you don't need a wife and a girlfriend. <laughs> Is that true? Things you think you need. You don't need a wife and a girlfriend. Amen? Cutting it to the quick, all right? <laughs> Things that you think you need. The devil can disguise. The devil weapons are lies, deceit, slander, immorality, trauma, and drama. I tell everybody, say the drama for the stage. I ain't got time for drama. You say the drama for the stage, amen. <laughs> Death, low self-esteem, greed, pride, arrogance, lust, covetousness, jealousy, fornication, drugs. All the devil's weapon, and you give them ammunition. The biggest weapon of the devil is, is carnality. Carnality. Being carnal and naive of the things of God. That's one of the devil's weapons, Amen. Anything that, that will distract you from the mission of the Lord, the devil will use it as a weapon against you. Amen. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. 
The problem we have as believers, we keep giving the devil ammunition to use against us. Oh, devil, you just got a single barrel. Let me give you a double barrel. <laughs> and you go home and you lust. You go home and you fight and you're jealous. Double barrel. You're giving the enemy ammunition to, for his weapon to prosper against you. You know how many people are in jail or on death row because of anger? Because mm. they couldn't control their appetite. Mm. Hallelujah. So let's get to the believer's weapons. Second Corinthians 10, verse 3 and 5. For we walk not, for we walk, no, no, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Isn't that beautiful? Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God for the pulling down of stronghold, casting down every imagination, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Uh, and bring into captivity every thought, every thought to the obedience of Christ. Amen. So the weapons, your weapon, your weapons, believers' weapon is prayer, faith, and the word of God. That's the strongest weapons. Amen. Amen. Prayer, faith, and the word of God. Hallelujah. We dealt with it this morning, Jerry. You said about the armor. Put on the whole armor of God. But you know what the armor can be a weapon? Can be a weapon as well. Cost the uh, the, the girl of truth is fight against lies, right? The blessed praise of righteousness is not only a gift, but, but the fight against wickedness. Amen? The gospel of peace is talking about Jesus. You, you know how to get rid of some people in your life? You want to get rid of some people in your life? Keep talking about Jesus. Keep talking about Jesus. You got a whole lot of people that are going to leave you. Keep talking about Jesus. You want to get rid of some people? Talk about Jesus. They ain't going to stick around too long. Hallelujah. Faith. You know, the, 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 the shield of faith, that, 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 that fight against doubt. Salvation, the hammer of salvation, that, that fight against insecurity. Because you have eternal security. Amen. The word of God was a sword of, of spirit. Sword of the spirit. The word of God cut like a knife. Amen. Then, of course, prayer. When you're praying, you're in constant communication with the war room. Amen. With, with the commander in chief. Amen. Let me give you God watching and we're going to get out of here. Hmm. God arsenal, that God has all of the host of heaven, that God has all of creation at his disposal. So whose side do you really want to be on? Whose side do you really want to be on? Amen. That God has chosen you, that you are established in righteousness, that every tongue that rises up against you, though, though, everything that rises up against thee shall be condemned. Amen. Yes. They condemn. But be very careful when you're talking about the servant of the Lord. Amen. Be extra cautious when you come against the servant of the Lord with your tongue because God has a tongue too. That's why I say, thus said the Lord. Thus said the Lord, for the mouth of God has spoken, amen. The tongue of the Lord has spoken over you. The tongue of the Lord has spoken over me. You got to know what it says. It says in Philippians 4, 3, 13, says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. It says in Philippians 4, 19, but God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. It says in Psalm 3 and 3, but thou, o Lord, or shield about me, my glory in the lifter of my head. Amen. It says in Psalm 28, the Lord is thy strength, and he was the saving strength of his anointed. But bring up that Deuteronomy 28 I gave you. We, we closing on this. Is it up there? Deuteronomy. And the Lord shall make thee the what? The head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. And if thou have hearkened unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, amen. Romans 8 says, and 37 says, and all these things you are more than conquerors. No weapon formed against you. No weapon formed against you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. No weapon shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you should be condemned. And in, fact, in fact, it says that thou shall condemn it. That, that you shall condemn it. By knowing who you are in Christ. The devil says something on that. That's not me, devil. I'm a child of God. I'm done. <laughs>